Former Duke star, NBA star, just I think one of the best all-around players. I mean, he was just great. And uh, you see him all over March Madness. Grant Tiki and Tierney, how are you today, buddy? What's happening? Hey, good morning, guys. I appreciate you you not calling me a sea level <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, well, you're welcome. But here's the thing, Grant. you got to make sure you fulfill this, fulfill this end of the bargain. There are occasions where A-level guests deliver C-level interviews. So let's not, let's not go down that road. Let's, <laughs> let's make sure there's an A-level guest, which you clearly are, and an A-level interview. They, they, we pay, good? they pay him a lot of money to be on TV. We can, we can almost guarantee this will be He's got A-level. Pizza Hut sneakers, by the way, this <laughs> no, guy. That's baller, dude. Can you, you actually can you play those? Can you, are they like functional sneakers, Grant? Yeah, no, they're functional sneakers now. You know, I, I'm, I, I don't do much playing anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was wearing them in the commercial, and they had me, they had me shooting and rebounding. I did a couple dunks. You know, I, I felt like I was trying out for a team. But uh, they actually, they're, they're tennis shoes, uh, believe it or not, that have uh, like a tracking device in them, a little button on the tongue, <laughs> and you can actually order pizza what? with the shoes. I've been asked that question. Grant, how does that even work? I mean, seriously, how does that even work? <laughs> so, so I have a pair, and basically, you, there's a there's an app that you have on your phone. Okay. And it connects to your. You have a Pizza Hut account, and you you press the button, and then you know it goes to the app, and um, you know you, you have your pizza that, of choice that you like to order. So, uh, you fill that in on the app, and when you press the button, it has a tracking device in the shoe. And it'll 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 locate the closest Pizza Hut to you. Look, I'm not a technology guy. Well, it sounds like <laughs> you. I know, right? <laughs> but, no, but it, it, it's pretty pretty cool. And, and what's interesting, uh, obviously, the whole ad was to try to you know get people to order, and there's easy ways to order. But the feedback on the shoes has been tremendous. And Pizza Hut made like 50 pairs and handed them out to some folks. Uh, but now, because of the overwhelming sort of excitement about the shoes, uh, they are on Monday. So on NCAA Championship Day, Monday, they're giving fans a chance to actually get a pair uh, of these pie tops. And if you wow. go to piecopshunt.com, you actually might go get a pair of these shoes. That's amazing. Uh, nice. uh, it, it's been pretty cool. And uh, But I've been asked that question more than who's going to win or what happened to Duke or who's your favorite player in the tournament. The number one question has been, are those pie tops real? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Say they are real. Hey, Sam, put that out on our social media because I know our followers want some of those. Pie top, tie, pie tops hunt. You can That's get some of those shoes. Stuff. That is that is crazy. It's pretty awesome though. But now now that we've got that out of the, out of the way and we're gonna order Pizza Hut pizzas here, who do you like in this Gonzaga? Uh, South Carolina game because BT and I were just talking about it. There's so such different and contrasting styles from Mark Fuse and in, 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 the, in the precision, the detail that have carried this program for so many years to Frank Martin, who's kind of like a maniac out there. And so it's 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 like emotion versus precision. Who has the advantage at this point uh, in the in the NCAA? Because it's, you're in the Final Four, man. These games are make it or break it. Emotion matters, but oftentimes execution matters more. Yeah, you know, it just proves there's different paths to success, and, and both teams are playing great basketball and are well coached. It is intriguing. You know, you have the experience, um, the balance uh, of a Gonzaga team. Uh, you know, they have they, they, they're a team that just uh, is probably Mark Few's best team, the deepest team, most talented team that he's ever had. And then you have the South Carolina team that probably a month ago nobody even thought of or even really knew. You couldn't even name a, star, a starter on the team, you know, unless you were a Gamecocks fan. And so they have, uh, obviously, the suffocating, relentless defense that they play. Um, but then they're scoring. Like, that's what they're doing. That's been the biggest surprise is how they've shot the ball, how they've scored. And they have probably the most underrated All-American in college basketball. He may not be underrated anymore. But but Thurnwell, Sanjarius Thurnwell, and how he has played, he has been sensational, elite performance, confident swagger. He was uh, Frank Martin's first uh, big time recruit. He believed in him, and he's come there. And he was an SEC Player of the Year, and people don't even really know about him. It's true. And, and so so um, I do think Gonzaga, the fact that they played with uh, West Virginia in the Sweet 16, and they won that game. Uh, but they got familiar uh, with that style of basketball. 
physical, tough-minded, uh, pressure defense, relentless all over the court for, for 40 minutes. They won that game in a close one. I think that experience will help them. They'll be better prepared for the pressure uh, in the defense because those are really the only two teams in all college basketball that play that way, West Virginia and South Carolina on the defensive end. Mm. So uh, if Gonzaga can limit their turnovers, if they can go inside the Kornowski's big, strong, skilled, a great passer, um, and just make outside shots. You know, you got to attack their pressure. You know, they trap you, and do all, you got to, you got to now you got four against three, and uh, and so, you know, it, it's going to be a good one. I mean, I, actually, I look forward to it. It's all about matchups. Who's got it going? Who stays out of foul trouble? All those different adjustments in game. Uh, but although they may not be familiar Final Four teams. I do think they're going to put together a pretty good game that's entertaining for the fans. Yeah, I'll tell you, Grant, you kind of lead me into where I was going to go. Told to the great Grant Hill with us here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. And you're right, two of the teams have never been here before. Uh, one team was last year back in 1939. Of course, that's Oregon. And then you have the, the blue blood in Carolina. Another uh, bit of an anomaly here, at least based on the storylines this season with all the great young freshmen at Kentucky and obviously the kid of Washington and Lonzo Ball and T.J. Leaf, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, marking in from Arizona, 14 of the 20 starters in the Final Four are actually upperclassmen, which kind of contradicts the theme of the season. And I want to ask you this. I don't know if I've ever seen this where a team that's gotten to the Final Four for the first time, like Gonzaga, actually still has pressure. Usually when you get there for the first time, you're absolved of pressure. But based on the circumstances, Gonzaga absolutely has pressure this weekend. You know, they do. They do. It's interesting. It's an interesting observation. You know, a team that, um, you know, first time getting there, never been to a Final Four, and it's almost like they're the team to win. You yep. know, they... They're the blue blood. They're, you know, they're they're uh, the experienced championship quality team. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there is that pressure, and, and people feel like, um, you know, this is this is needed to validate Mark Few and to validate his program and what he's done. He's been, re- you know, remarkably consistent with how great and successful that program has been. But they just can't get over that hump. So, uh, and then you have a team. It's not like they're playing, you know, a Kansas or playing, you know, a, a Blue Blood. They're not playing North Carolina. You know, they're playing South Carolina, who's a Cinderella. And so they are favored to win it. Uh, but, you know, look, when you get to the Final Four, everybody's under pressure. You know, everyone, you know, you get this far, you know how hard it is to get there. You know, it, it's no guarantee you'll ever get back. And so, you know, you want to win it. And it's no like playing with house money or we're supposed to lose. No, you, you, you come here to win. And so I guarantee you that each coach is putting pressure on himself, his staff, and his players to go out and have their best performance uh, for, for two nights here during, uh, during the Final Four weekend. Yeah, no, it's going to be an awesome weekend, and, and, and we're looking forward to it. But let me, I want to bring you into an NBA conversation uh, real uh, briefly. We've, we've seen it over the last uh, few weeks, this whole resting of players. Now, you were a longtime vet in the NBA. You had a lot of injuries when you were playing as well. Could rest have helped you? You know what I mean? This maintenance days, not not necessarily an acute injury that was, you know, you're on a report that's keeping you out of, of a good game, but does rest help you? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, for me, from <laughs> – it's complicated. This is this is like a, <laughs> a, a, a long answer. But, um, for me, when I first got hurt in Detroit, you know, we never really found out what was wrong. And so it was more of an attitude back then and even as I was going through my injury ordeal that, you know, just tape it up and here's some medication and go out and play. <laughs> and I think, you know, we never really – um, managed my injury correctly. And I say we because I'm partly responsible, too. It is my body. I could have said, no, I don't want to play. Um, so, you know, it, it was a badge of honor almost to mm-hmm. play, play through pain, yep. to play all the games. To, you know, and so that's why you see a lot of old guys like myself who talk down and don't like this idea of rest. But I do believe that if I had somebody, uh, an organization, a medical staff, that could protect me from myself and also uh, probably be pretty honest and transparent about what was going on, I think we could have avoided a lot of these injuries. And I say that because, look, I went through that stretch of four or five years where I couldn't stay healthy, but then I came back 
and I became an Iron Man. I, I didn't get hurt at all. I was playing, and I, I didn't miss games. I, you know, I went to Phoenix and in four years missed like three games, um, you know, and, and sort of reinvented myself. So the ankle just never really healed, and we never really gave it time to heal. Uh, it was always rushed to get back, rushed to get back. Once it healed, there was no problem. And, you know, I, I had my last ankle surgery in 2003 and then played until 2013. So I played almost 10 years after my last surgery. So I say all that to say the mindset now is we've got a lot of money invested in players. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a long season. It's a grind of the season. There's more of an emphasis on it. And as an owner, I mean, I'm vice chairman of the Atlanta Hawks. I don't have an issue with it. I don't have a problem with it um, if it's done the right way and as an organization and as players, you take the right approach. Now, the fans sometimes miss out, yeah. and that's the problem. Yeah, and no, there's I... no quick fix for that. You want to see LeBron James, you want to see whoever, and they don't play that game. That's tough. And so maybe there's a way we can fix it where we can be more transparent. Um, but, you know, look, it's a grueling season, and, and Tiki, you know, I mean, our bodies are a livelihood. You're right. Obviously, basketball is a little different than football. I'm not yeah. trying to equate the two. Yeah, but you but, know, you but know you what? know, Grant. Once once your body goes, you're done, man. <laughs> you're done. Now listen, and we're almost done. Unfortunately, man, that was a great answer, by the way. I'm happy that you were able to expound on it as much as you did. But we'll tweet this out for sure. Pytopshunt.com. Uh, great ambassador for both the NCAA and, of course, the NBA. And I've always said, uh, Grant, if, if Grant doesn't get hurt, man, that's he's one of the all time. He might he might be on the top ten list of all. Yeah. He was that good. Great. Enjoy the games this weekend, pal. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no doubt. Great deal. There he is.